All right, in this video, we're going to do some logarithmic differentiation. And logarithms are one of those things that seem to kind of give people the chills. Um, they kind of cringe a little bit when you mention them. Um, oddly enough, it can actually make finding some derivatives a bit easier. So in this first problem that we're going to take the derivative of, OK, there's sine of x quantity squared x cubed plus 1 quantity to the 4th, and then the quantity x plus 3 to the 8th. So if I had to, even not knowing anything at all about logarithmic differentiation, I could use the quotient rule, I could use the product rule, I could use the chain rule, I could de definitely do all of that. So this is not a problem that you would have to use logarithmic differentiation on by any means, but it will, in fact, I think make the problem a little easier. And the idea is you take the natural logarithm of the left side, and I'm also going to take the natural logarithm of the right side. So just let me basically rewrite everything here. And what you're going to do is you're going to use properties of logarithms to simplify down the right side. So on the left, ln of y, hey, that's just ln of y. Nothing's happening. And you may want to look over your properties of logarithms. Remember, if you have a logarithm of products, that will turn into addition. So sine of x squared plus the natural logarithm of x cubed plus 1 to the fourth. And remember, things in the denominator get subtracted. So I'll have minus natural logarithm of x plus 3 to the eighth. So this is how the right-hand side simplifies down. And we can actually simplify this a little bit further. So again, ln of y, just ln of y. Remember, if you have powers, you can pull those powers out front as constants. So I'll get 2 ln of sine of x, and now the power's gone. The 4 will come out front. I'll have ln of x cubed plus 1. Again, the power's gone. And the 8 will come out front, and I'll have ln of x plus 3. So again, I haven't taken any derivative yet. I've just used logarithms to simplify down the right-hand side. And recall, if you take the derivative of the natural logarithm of f of x, basically whatever's on the inside of the brackets or parentheses, you get 1 over that stuff, and then you multiply it by the derivative of that stuff. So this is the basic formula I'm going to be using when I start taking my derivative. On the left-hand side, it's ln of y, so I will get 1 over y. But since we're taking the derivative with respect to x, I have to remember implicit differentiation. And I'll tack on a dy dx. Or sometimes, again, they'll abbreviate this as y prime. Now I'm going to take the derivative on the right-hand side. The 2 comes along for the ride. If I take the derivative of ln of sine x, using this formula here, I'll get 1 over sine of x. I'll multiply that by the derivative of sine x, which is just cosine of x. On my next term, the 4 comes along for the ride. Again, I get 1 over the stuff, x cubed plus 1. And then I have to multiply that by the derivative, which is 3x squared. And then my last term, I have minus 8 ln of x plus 3 that, that I have to take the derivative of. So the 8 will come along for the ride. I'll multiply that by 1 over the denominator. And then if you multiply the, by the derivative of the inside, the, the derivative of x plus 3 is just 1. So that's now the derivative of the right-hand side, if I can squeeze it all in there. So again, in this problem, what we're trying to solve for is dy dx. Well, there's a 1 over y that I don't want there. Well, I can multiply both sides by y. So I have 2 times cosine over sine. Remember, sine over cosine is tangent, so cosine over sine is cotangent. I've got 
4 and the 3x squared will go to the numerator. So 4 times 3 is 12x squared over x cubed plus 1. And then I'll have minus 8 over x plus 3. And sometimes people will let you stop at this point. You've now solved for dy dx or y prime, and that's what you want. Um, sometimes what they'll do, you know, you want your derivative at the end to only involve x's. So remember the very first thing we started with was y equals all of this stuff. You could actually resubstitute that value back in for your y. So I'll get dy dx, squeeze it all in here equals y, and again that's basically what I started with, y was equal to all of this stuff. So I'll get sine of x, or I could write it as sine squared of x, x cubed plus 1 to the 4th over x plus 3 to the 8th, and then basically, so this is what y equals, and now you can just drop everything else right back down. So you have 2 cotangent of x, plus 12x squared over x cubed plus 1 minus 8 over x plus 3. And that is now going to be your derivative. And that'll be your final answer. And again, this original problem is not one that you have to do using implicit differentiation. Um, I'm definitely going to do another example on another video where it's a problem where you pretty much do have to do implicit differentiation to find the derivative. But again, this is not you know, exactly easy by any stretch. I'm not going to say that it's short because it's not. But if you did start with this original thing, y equals this stuff, again, you'd have to use the quotient rule. You'd have to use the product rule multiple times. You'd have to use the chain rule. And then if you had to simplify it down by factoring and canceling and combining like terms, I think you would find that it would take much, much, much more work than what we did here. So I hope this makes some sense. Um, again, logarithmic differentiation, not a short process, but it may be shorter than the alternative.